Hi, this is April. Welcome back to my channel. If you're anything like me and you've been in the market for your first camera, I'm sure you have come across both the Lumix G9 and the Sony A6400. And you can pick up either of these on the used market for around $700. So they're quite similar in price. The Sony A6400 brand new is more like $899 and I have seen the Lumix G9 on Amazon for about $1,200 brand new. The major difference that I have found with both of these cameras is the weight. The Lumix G9 is pretty chunky at 579 grams, whereas the Sony is a nice light 403 grams. Their body style is pretty similar but as you can see, the Lumix G9 has a much larger viewfinder than the Sony A6400. This is very comfortable to look through for someone that wears glasses like me. The other major body style difference is that with the Sony A6400, the screen only tilts up, whereas the Lumix, is fully articulating and it can flip to the side, which I really appreciate that. So that if you're trying to record yourself, you can frame up your shot a lot more easily. For photography, I have found that both of the cameras function almost the same, except I do prefer this more comfortable electronic viewfinder in the Lumix G9 than I do in the A6400. The Lumix G9 has a micro four thirds sensor and it's 20.3 megapixels. The Sony A6400 is an APS-C sensor and it's 24 megapixels. But as you'll see in the photo comparisons, I don't really prefer one over the other as far as the image quality goes. The major difference comes in video. The Lumix G9 can do 4K 60 frames per second, whereas the Sony A6400 does 4K and up to only 30 frames per second. Both can do high speed video, but the Lumix G9 can do up to 180 frames per second, and the Sony A6400 tops out at 120 frames per second. I was doing some slow motion video and the 180 frames per second was great. The other major difference is the Lumix G9 unfortunately has recording limits. It has a recording limit of 10 minutes when you're trying to do 4K 60 and 30 minutes when you're doing 4K 24 or 30 frames per second. The Sony A6400 has no record limits. But the major downside with the Sony A6400, as you will see in the upcoming footage that I have, this has no in-body image stabilization whatsoever. And the footage is so shaky. And this is the Sony A6400 at 16 millimeters. How does the audio sound on this one? This one is also in the automatic setting using the continuous autofocus, how it would come straight out of the box. But the good news is this has beautiful autofocus. It has what they call phase detect autofocus. This has never failed me ever, <laughs> although the footage is very shaky if I don't try to put it on a tripod. The Lumix G9 on the other hand, I've had a couple incidents where I have had the autofocus fail, but I really do think it could have been my fault because instead of having it on autofocus continuous, at one time I did have it on autofocus single, and I don't think it was able to keep up with the movement that was going on in the video. But the Lumix G9 having in-body image stabilization, also known as IBIS, this has been a dream to work with. I don't have to worry about that shaky footage at all, unless I'm really walking too hard or I'm being very clumsy. This is a Lumix G9, an intelligent auto, using continuous autofocus. How 
how does the microphone sound? This is at 12 millimeters. The Sony A6400, no matter what I have tried, I'm still ending up with shaky footage because of the lack of stabilization. This is awesome though if you want to put it on a tripod and you're just doing stationary studio type videos. But for photography, I find this is doing a wonderful job and plus it's so much lighter to carry around than the Lumix G9. Besides the stable footage, the other advantage of the Lumix G9 is it has dual card slots, which is super handy, especially if you're a professional. I am not, but I've heard horror stories where someone has recorded someone's wedding just to have the SD card become corrupted. So with this, with having the dual card slots, you can get a second copy of whatever event you're trying to record. The Sony A6400, just has the one card slot. The battery life is pretty similar on both of these. I can get around 400 photographs for each of these, but I do enjoy both of these cameras equally, just in different ways. When I'm on the move and I wanna ensure that I have smooth footage, I will always take the Lumix G9. In a studio situation on a tripod where I want the ease of autofocus, I will definitely use the Sony a6400. The Lumix G9 is really no slouch with its autofocus, but it can at times tend to fail you. But honestly, I think in my case it was user error. For photography, I love the images coming out of both cameras, but the EVF in the Lumix G9 being a lot larger, I appreciate that so much more. With both of these being at a comparable price on the used market, you really can't go wrong with either of these. But if you're doing more vlogging, I would definitely say the Lumix G9 over the Sony A6400. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing as I try to find the perfect camera for a beginner like me.